everybody. Welcome back to the McLeanness podcast. Uh, it is, it's been a few weeks since I actually last uploaded. I was hoping to upload before this, but there was just a lot of life stuff, school stuff, work stuff kind of getting in the way of me getting a chance to film another episode. So my apologies for that. I really, I want to be more consistent about uploading, although I don't think I'll ever be somebody who's able to say I'm going to upload every Sunday because I think I'm just too chaotic for that and there are going to be times that I just don't want to do it. So I'm not going to be quite that consistent, but I do want to at least be uploading regularly because it is something that I'm, I've really been enjoying doing as well and connecting with people. I Because things have been so busy with like I say, school, work, life. I'm still working on a lot of the same patterns, a lot of the same designs that I was in my, that I've talked about in my previous episodes. So I thought for this episode instead, I wanted to talk about some of the new pattern releases on Ravelry that I'm really excited about. Um, and I know I mentioned it before in another episode too, how I get distracted <laughs> by new things that come out. Um, and somebody did tell me that I won ADHD bingo and I thought that was great because I never win anything and I'm extremely happy to win ADHD bingo. I think that's great. Um, so I do get distracted by new things that come out. Uh, and just as much as I love knitting, I also love looking at yarn and yarn shopping, obviously. I mean, that's a hobby in and of itself. And I also love looking at patterns. I, whenever I just want to hang out on the internet and just kind of be comforted, I will look at Ravelry and look at designs and just find out more about their construction and I'll look at people's project pages and I'll see what yarns they chose. And it makes me really sad that Ravelry isn't accessible for everybody because I think it's just a really great resource to find out all this information about patterns and when the yarn maybe that the designer chose isn't accessible to me either geographically or financially that i'm able to oh maggie then i'm able to at least look at what are some of the other options that i think worked well based on people's project pages so i really appreciate that but i know it's not accessible to everybody this is just usually the site where i will kind of go to to look at patterns so I'm going to talk about some of the ones that I've seen released there recently. I know that some of the designers, at least on this list, I don't know about all of them, but some of them I know for sure they tend to upload on other sites as well. So when they release the design, they'll either also put that design on Lovecrafts or Etsy or Payhip or some of the different, um, different sites where you can buy patterns as well. Um, but I didn't necessarily go and look at every single one, so I apologize for that. But there's been just some really amazing designs being released recently that I would love to have in my closet right now. Obviously, I'm, I'm definitely a product knitter. I know some people are really much, very much a process knitter where they just really enjoy the process of knitting. And I, I love to knit, obviously, if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it but it's often because I want the finished product at the end too. So I wanna wear whatever I'm knitting right away. And although I know I talked as well in one of my last episodes about all the summer designs I'm really looking forward to, some of these are still more, you know, fall, winter, there's, there's sweater designs that I don't need to have in my closet right this minute. Um, but, it's still only seven degrees here, so it's not necessarily summer weather yet. And before you know it, it's in Canada, it's cold again. So I think it's always good to have a steady supply of sweaters on my needles and in the making because you're always going to be wearing them. I should say too, um, this sweater that I'm wearing right now is the, so it actually the color where it goes kind of down to about nipple height. Uh, this is the Picket Fences sweater by Laura Reinbach Knits. It is one of my very few color work sweaters because I suck very much at color work. Because I'm an English thrower, I I have a pretty good speed for English throwing, but when it comes to color work, I'm literally like, I pick up one yarn, I throw it. 
that I have to go pick up the other color and I throw it. I mean, it takes me bloody ages in order to do color work. And it makes me sad because color work is stunning and I love the way it looks and I wish I was faster at it. And maybe someday I will get peer pressured into learning continental and you know, I'll take the plunge because I know if, well, at least when it came to color work, it would make the process a lot faster and I would appreciate that. I think it would make me actually finish more color work designs if I actually wasn't so slow at knitting them because I just get I just get tired and I find it very cumbersome to knit color work because of how I knit. Um, but I don't know if I want to learn how to re-knit. I mean, re-knitting or learning how to re-knit, that's a lot of work, you know? Then I'll be really slow starting out again. I'll be really clumsy. I'll struggle with my tension even more. I don't know if I have it in me. I, I think I probably will make a solid effort at some point, but right now I don't have the mental or physical capacity <laughs> to really learn how to knit. That's a someday thing. Maybe when I am not in school and juggling a few jobs and I'm just working one job and I have a salary and I can just relax and learn how to knit. Having a salary is what I <laughs> rely on for like all my, maybe when I have a salary again, then I'll do X, Y, Z. Maybe when I have a salary again, I'll learn how to knit continental. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, but to get started, I have a few designs that have come out recently that I'm very excited about. And I am a fast talker. I don't think it's, I need to split this into two episodes, but if I feel that this is getting very long and nobody's going to want to listen to me for that long, then maybe I will split it and do two episodes. Who knows? We're just gonna try this and see how it goes. And I'm looking down a lot because I do have my computer. Uh, there's no way I'll remember all the details about the different patterns. My memory is not that good. So I'm gonna have to look down. The first sweater that I have love, love, loved, I bought it the first day it came out. Although unfortunately I do not have enough appropriate yarn in my stash to knit it right now, is the Lanax sweater by Rebecca from the Crea Bea. This is a beautiful, uh, zip up sweater or half zip up I guess knit and DK weight yarn she used the bare naked wools Kent DK I think she also has a beautiful orange one in that um, Santa's garn double Sunday that orange feeling it's one of my favorite colors I think on that line because I just love it so much it's a perfect like hunter hunter's orange um, I Think this is stunning and she has talked about this a lot on her podcast the crea bea uh, she went into a lot of depth about you know the design the construction she does have a video tutorial that can show you how to actually sew in the zipper when you're done which i think is great because i have only ever tried to add a zipper to some to something i knit once and i messed it up and i have never attempted again since and i mean it just makes your piece so much more functional when you do have the zipper and you have the option to close it up. I love this sweater so much. I would put this on my needles right now if I had enough yarn, but I do not. And that breaks my heart into many pieces. This is very size inclusive. It goes from sizes one to 10, uh, which ranges from a 35 to about a 71.25 inch bust. I generally say inches for things because that's, even though we, technically use like centimeters and stuff here in Canada, people refer to things in inches. So nobody ever says like that's 10 centimeters. Nobody ever says that here. So we have it, but anyway, we're confused. We're very confused about our metric and imperial systems in Canada. We choose whatever we want in the moment. Um, four to six inches of positive ease is recommended. Uh, so you would want to choose a size that gives you at least a little bit of positive ease, but ultimately it's always up to you as to how you want your design to fit your finished product. She again also used a needle size four, I believe to knit the body of the sweater, but you would just have to do your gauge watch and see whatever needle size works best for you. And when it comes to garments, I am a firm believer in gauge swatching because I would hate to just knit an entire product, you know, a whole sweater and then doesn't fit me in the end. That would break my heart and possibly my sanity. I just don't know if I could cope with that. So I, I do always gauge swatch and sometimes I'm not a hundred percent on, you know, and that I'm okay with if I think it's not going to hugely affect the fit, 
uh, but I know sometimes I have been way off in my initial swatches. So thank goodness I went back and did a few more so that I would actually end up with a sweater that fit me at the end. Uh, but yeah, I, I love it. I love it so, so much. I can't wait to buy yarn so that I could actually make that design. And actually the next pattern that I'm going to talk about is also by Rebecca, the Crayabea. It is her Corin cardigan, which she just released this month. It is also knit in a DK or worsted weight yarn. I saw that some people use worsted, some people use DK. Uh, I think she has samples knit in both um, Cascade 220 as well as Pearl Soho. So they're, they're knitting yarn. I don't, I'm not really familiar with Pearl Soho yarns, um, but Cascade 220 is a worsted and the Pearl Soho one I believe was a DK. So I think you, again, you just have to gauge swatch and see whichever one works best for you. Again, very size inclusive, 10 sizes ranging from a 34 to a 64 inch bust. And there is a little bit of positive ease recommended. So about an inch to three and a half inches or so. It's an all over lace cardigan. This one is knit from the bottom up with drop shoulders. Um, there are options as well to make either a short sleeve or a long sleeve or a round neck or a V-neck. So technically in one pattern, if you wanted it four times, you could come up with many different combinations, which I think is great because then you can really tailor it to what you like. And if you wanted several versions of the same thing, but they all look a little different. I think that's so versatile. So for one pattern, you really get multiple patterns. Wonderful. And again, she talked about this a lot on her podcast, The Crea Bea. The only yarn that I think I would have enough of in my stash, although I don't know if it would work, would be We Are Knitters the Cotton. Um, it is like a heavier, I find like a heavier DK weight yarn. I just don't know, it because it's 100% cotton, how well it would hold its shape. That would be the one thing I'd be concerned about, especially after blocking, as to whether or not, like do I wanna try knitting it in all 100% cotton and having it maybe not turn out at the end or like look good initially and then <clears throat> after a few wears it not looking good. Maybe somebody can inform me. I don't know that I've ever knit a whole garment in we are knitters of cotton, so I don't really know for sure how it would work long term. Uh, but I do know that oftentimes with cotton, it can grow quite a bit. So I don't know. Maybe I could knit in like a smaller size than usual. Like usually I would knit a size two that generally when I look at different patterns, I'm not an extra small, I'm more of a small. But maybe if I tried knitting the extra small, if it grew a bit, I wouldn't have to worry so much. I don't know. If you guys have any thoughts or feelings, let me know. I I would love an extra opinion. That is the reason why I want to start a podcast. I need I need input. <laughs> I need help. I need help. Um, the next design that I've seen come out recently that I really like is the Moon Crush Pullover um, by Jacqueline Zizlak. I may have gotten that wrong, and if I did, I apologize. I can barely speak English. So I'm not going to pretend that I can speak any other language. Like I'm not multilingual. Wish I was. Am not. Um, can speak a tiny bit of French. Poorly. Poorly. This was also released this past month, April 2023. Uh, and there are a couple different versions from what I can tell. There's one that's knit using three colors. Uh, there's one that's more of just a two color design. The one thing is, so this has a super interesting construction in that it, it, the color work is done in Tarja style, which I've never done before. And I feel like I could do it. However, this is knit flat in two pieces and then it is seamed together. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know. I, I love the three color version, especially. Some of the testers versions, blew my mind. The color choices, stunning. I love them so much. And I would love to have this sweater in my closet yesterday, but I'm worried that I would put all this work into it and then my shitty seeming job would make it look awful. So I don't know. I thought about it. 
And this is It's Knitted a Fingering Weight Yarn. She used um, Modus Operandi fibers, which I think is a bit more expensive, but she also gave uh, some like budget yarn options in her, like on her Ravelry page. Plus again, like I said before, I always go and look at um, like testers, people that already made the sweater. I always go and look at like yarns that other people have chosen and check out their finished sweaters and see how I think it worked up. And I did see at least one person chose Cascade Fingering and I know I showed it a previous episode too. Like I have quite a bit of Cascade Fingering and other fingering white yarns in my stash that I could absolutely choose um, to knit this sweater. I'm just afraid that I put so much work into the entire pieces and then my crappy seaming would just be like, mm, now it doesn't look good anymore. Maybe I can get somebody else to seam it for me. That would be a thought. We'll see. We'll see. I really need to work on my seaming. I, I know I do. It's a me problem, 100%. Um, this is incredibly size inclusive, ranges from sizes 1 to 9, um, 36 to 68 inch bust. Four to six inches of positive ease is recommended, but again, it's entirely up to you how you like your things to fit. Uh, there are There is some short row shaping included. Shape the shoulders and the neck. Don't ever be afraid of short row shaping. It's so easy, especially German short rows. They will definitely be the ones I recommend. Um, and again, there are yarn amounts listed for both cropped and full length options. So you can choose whatever kind of fit you like the best. Yeah. I love that three. I keep going back to it. I keep looking at it. I really want to knit it. Do I want to knit it flat? Oh, I don't know. I wish it was in the round. <laughs> that would make it so much easier for me. But I don't know how, like, intarsia, if, can you even knit intarsia in the round? I've never actually done it. So I know nothing really about it. Somebody let me know. Can you knit intarsia in the round? I don't know that you can. I think that might be the reason why it has to be knit flat. We'll find out. Coming up next is the Cal Cardigan by Claire Jackson at Perfectly Knotted. I have knit many of Claire's patterns. I think I did, I did a count when I was looking at this one and I went back in my old like project pages and stuff to see how many of her sweaters I knit. And I think I've knit nine of her garment designs. I really like how Claire also lays out her pattern instructions like for different raglans and whatnot the way that she does her charts with the increases and everything laid out. I just, I really like her instructions. I find them very clear and easy to follow. Um, I think they also always give like stitch counts or that at least they did in the past give stitch counts. So I know, okay, after kind of each round, how many stitches I should have when I'm increasing, which I really appreciate versus when I get to the end and it's just like, you should have this many for the whole body. I, I always get scared because if I don't have that right amount, where did I mess up? <laughs> and in what sections even did I mess up if it's not been broken down for me? I actually am just working on a t-shirt right now where that was the case and my stitch count wasn't correct and I just, I just fiddled with it really. But still, I, I really like having the very explicit instructions as to what my stitch count should be along the way. So I love how our patterns are written. This is a cardigan design knit using DK and lace together. So it comes up to about a worsted gauge. She used Explorer fiber knits um, in their Rockies DK and Surrey Alpaca lace. I think I tried to <laughs> buy Explorer knits once and I mean, it, it just, it sells out so fast, which is so great for them. I mean, I love that so much that when yarns come out with these like pre-orders and whatnot and things just sell out incredibly quickly I mean that's so wonderful for the sellers you know for the yarn tires to put in all this work and actually you know have it pay off um, but it is sad when you are trying to buy yarn and that happens and you just don't end up getting anything so I've never actually successfully purchased from Explorer Fiber Knits but their their yarns and their colors are phenomenal you could also use whatever DK and alpaca lace, mohair, whatever you have in your stash. I don't know that I would have enough DK or Surrey mohair in my stash right now. I'd have maybe like some mohair um, in my stash. It's like a hobby Diablo, which is kind of like it's an acrylic. It's not a mohair, mohair silk, you know, the whole bit. It's kind of an, it's an, more of an acrylic mohair. 
Um, but I don't think I would even have enough DK weight. I don't really have a lot of DK weight yarn in my stash right now, which is tough because I have a lot of patterns I want to knit that are in DK weight yarn. So I just don't know that I have enough right now for this one. Um, but it's knit top down in one piece. I think it, from what I gathered <clears throat> on the Ravelry page, at points, um, part, your parts are like separated into different sections before they end up being rejoined again, but I don't think there's any actual seaming involved. Uh, there's a half brioche shoulder detail as well as a half brioche button band and afterthought pockets can be included as well. And I've never actually knit afterthought pockets. And I think it was um, knitted by Whitney. I was watching her podcast one day and she was talking about adding afterthought pockets and then it actually ended up being like much easier than what she was expecting. So I would really like to give it a try and see how it works because I've just, I've never done it. I've only tried adding pockets to something like once they were already knit and it didn't end up looking very good. I found it looked up like quite messy I, and it was probably again a me problem. My technique and my placement were just off. So I'd be interested to see how the adding the afterthoughts maybe worked instead. Yeah, I would love to knit this. It looks so cozy. Mm, perfect. Can't wait. And I have another cardigan on here too that I'm going to talk about after but that's that's a little ways down the road right now. The next pattern that I saw come out recently that I really like is the Len New by Anka Strict. Anka Strict. I don't really know how it is supposed to be pronounced, clearly. It was just released in April. It was made using a lace weight and fingering weight yarn together, so a decay weight yarn, if you don't necessarily want to hold two together. Uh, ranges from sizes 1 to 10. Uh, 36.25 to 65.5 inch bust and 4.75 to 7 inches of positive ease is recommended. It is knit seamlessly from the top down, which I love. <laughs> uh, it is shaped with short rows and it appears to be like cable detailing along the front center. And then I've also included a picture of the back as well where like the center of the back, it looks like it's like a purling or, or seed stitch detail. I can't really tell, but just adds a little bit of interest for the back too. There's also, and I didn't realize this, there is a Lenu hood pattern that you can make to wear either along, so you could use, make the, use the same yarn and make it to be worn along with this sweater or without, which I thought was really cool. I've never knit like a separate hood or anything or or anything like that. I've only ever knit hoods onto sweaters that, you know, attach together. But I, I do like the idea of having a separate hood. I think that's kind of fun. And I do actually think I would have enough, uh, I have some Santa's Garn Sunday and Tin Silk Mohair in my stash that would possibly be enough. I'd have to check my amounts again. I know I have some, you know, in coordinating colors in my stash. I don't know if it'd be exactly enough for this sweater. I would have to see, but I do think this sweater is beautiful. And I love, I love a top down detail. It's my favorite sweater construction. I, and I know that bottom up definitely has its points of privilege too. And I've knit a, I've knit a bunch of bottom up sweaters that I love but I, I just love a top down. I don't know what it is. I think it's probably the fact that when I knit bottom up, I eventually have to start working flat at some point and that's the part that I enjoy less. I love being able to work in the round the whole time. The next sweater that I'm gonna talk about is actually a bottom up sweater. It's the Tomorrow by Alicia Plummer at Alicia Plums. It is made in a sport weight yarn and I don't think, I have some sport weight yarn in my stash. When I got the Andy and Treasure by Knit Picks for my sound sweater that I'm testing right now for Molly at White All Crochet Co. I did buy another kind of bunch of it in a different color, but it's not enough to knit this sweater, unfortunately, which does make me sad because I think it would be really stunning for this sweater. Just not enough. So sizes it goes from sizes 1 to 10 ranging from a 29.25 to an 81.75 that's the finished hem circumference though so i don't really know how that works 
I don't really know how that works, but zero to four inches of positive ease is recommended. So you can make it fit, you know, close to your body, or you could add some positive ease as well. It looks like from the pat from the pictures that Alicia had taken that the model is wearing a size that has more positive ease. And I think I really like that look. I don't know if I would like it as much if I had it fitting really close to my body, but I think this is just a really stunning design. I think that is what you would call like honeycomb cabling along the front. And it looks like from what I can tell too, the like really wide arms, kind of what, like what I have on my needles right now with the sound sweater, where it's almost more like, kind of like a swan show almost, where it's so wide right there. I just think it's really cute. Maybe if I ever get enough sport weight yarn in my stash again. I really, I'm so close to breaking my not buying yarn. I have carts online everywhere at this point that I am just itching to click checkout. It's been very hard. It's been very hard. Life has been hard recently. There's been a lot of things recently that have just been hard, but maybe I'll talk about that later. We'll see. Uh, the next pattern that has come out, and I mean, you know that I have been knitting a few Jessie Mae patterns recently, um, but her Helix halter was just released. It's a pullover top uh, knit in a fingering weight yarn. This is such a cool design. It has that kind of <laughs> Maggie, your eyes. She hears a loud truck going by right now, so she's got her crazy eyes out. I know. Um, it's knit in a fingering weight yarn. It has the kind of drop stitch detailing that is included on the outline tank and on our outline shirts, but the drop stitch detailing looks like it goes kind of all the way around the body. And then there is the option of just knitting the halter by itself or adding on the sleeves so you would have the bare shoulders. And I think both looks are really cool. Um, I don't know what people wear underneath it. That's one of my questions. I keep trying to figure out like, what are they wearing underneath so that like you don't have bra strap showing? I don't know. I'm not sure. That question remains unanswered, but I think it's really cool. I, I would have plenty of fingering weight yarn in my stash into this. I think the yarn that she chose is like a straight up, like 100% cotton yarn, which I don't have any 100% cotton fingering weight yarn in my stash but like I say I have plenty of just plain fingering weight and I think because it looks like a pretty airy design I don't know that it would make a huge difference for me if I knit it in just you know my wool yarn instead I mean I'm sure I say that now in the when it's 36 degrees outside it would make a huge difference for me if it's just in wool but it's really cute I really like it and I wouldn't necessarily have to buy extra yarn to make this pattern which I appreciate and always size inclusive. I think everything I've chosen here is size inclusive. That's kind of how I rule things out. Um, so ranging from smaller sizes right up to larger sizes. I like that. I think everybody should be able to knit. doesn't matter what your body shape is. So it ranges in sizes from one to nine. It is knit from the top down, flat and in the round. I don't think I mentioned that. The next sweater, Maggie, this is not shower time. This is knitting talk time. Just no shits given. Hmm? You don't care what I have to say. Fair enough. The next sweater on the, on my list, I was gonna say on the pattern, my next pattern on my list is the Fade of Beads by Pope Vergara, Pope Knits. This is a really cool one. Something I've never really made before. I made it, I've, I've made plenty of top down sweaters. I've never added beads to anything. And I think this is really, really cute. This is knit using a bulky weight yarn, um, US size 10 needles. So some really a chunkier needles. If you're somebody who likes, you know, heavier yarn, heavier or like bigger needle sizes. I think people really go either way. Some people really don't like chunky needles and chunky yarn, or some people only really want to knit in chunky needles and chunky yarn. And I don't really know that I have a preference. I think I will often choose like middle of the road, like not super small, not super big, but I don't mind 
going like really small or really big either. I mean, really small is daunting in that, you know, whatever you're knitting is gonna take you forever, um, or at least me forever, but I don't really mind either, either or. But this is a bulkier weight yarn and um, a bulkier needle, size inclusive, six to eight inches of positive ease is recommended. Uh, and the beading is faded through the yoke. And I just think this is so pretty. I have a bunch of bulky weight yarn in my stash. So I would have enough to knit the sweater itself. I don't have any beads because I've never done any kind of bead work, but I just think this is really, really pretty. And I think that the, um, the project pages that the testers and other people who have knit this pattern made are just, they're really stunning. So if you're interested, I would 100%, I'm including all the links to everything down in the show notes. I would 100% go and check it out. I think this is just really cool. And I don't think this is the only design when I was looking at her her other designs on Ravelry. I feel like there's others also that she's included beadwork in as well. So that's something that you really like already or that interests you, then I would definitely check her out because wow, I just think that's so pretty. It reminds me, it's like one of those things when I was watching um, the grocery girls knit, I mean, everybody knows who the grocery girls are, but they talk about um, adding sparkles to sweaters. And I would never have thought of somebody who wanted to add sparkles to my sweater, but every time they talk about it, I'm like, I wanna buy sparkle yarn and knit something in sparkles, obviously. I am influenced. I mean, I am never gonna be an influencer. I am an influency. Like people influence me all the time with all the things they're making and yeah things that i would never have thought i would enjoy i really i really start to love when i hear other people talk about them i'm influenced what can i say the next pattern on my list here is the olive tank by sari nordland um, at sari n this is just a really bang basic tank top design and as much as I love the statement pieces, like the Helix Halter, I mean, that that's more of a statement piece, but I really also love a lot of plain knits too that you can wear with anything, pair with any of your pants, like it's something you can throw on without really having to think about it. I, I love that option. A lot of things that I wear, I think, are very plain, simply because then I can throw them on under things, over things, whatever pants I'm wearing because I'm a student, I can't just go shopping all the time for new clothes. You know, I want things that are going to work with a lot of things I already own. So a pattern like the olive tank to me is just very versatile in that way. Um, she made hers using knitting for olive pure silk held double. So a DK weight, those are, uh, that's a fingering weight yarn. So this is more of a DK. Um, I've never worked with the pure silk before. I'd really like to, I think that it would have a lot of really nice drape, which would be stunning. And a yarn made of like a cotton, linen, something that is drapey is what is recommended for this pattern. Size inclusive, not meant to have a ton of positive ease. So only about zero to two inches of positive ease is recommended. Um, yeah, I, and I think as well that when I was looking at this, you have the option of knitting uh, like a, maybe a higher low back and then you can also wear it backwards. You could wear like a, you could have like a lower neckline, higher neckline, whatever you like. If you want to have no cleavage, maybe a little bit more cleavage. I can knit either version. There'd still be no cleavage. That's fine. But um, yeah, love it. Love it very much. I think this would be a great one. I don't know if I have enough like summer weight yarn for this, but I would definitely check it out because I just think again, It'd be very versatile. I could wear it with anything. I love that. The next pattern on my list is kind of an exception in that it's not actually a single pattern. It is a collection of patterns. It is the Basics Collection by Alex and Emily from Tin Can Knits. Uh, I love everything Tin Can Knits does. I don't think I'm alone in that. But I thought this is such a great idea for, again, when you just want those staple knit items that you can wear with anything. Or if you are also a beginner knitter looking to make your first sweater, your first cardigan, your first pair of socks, your first hat, then you could go and you can either buy these patterns separately. So hat, cardigan, sweater, socks, 
Um, they can be bought separately. They can be bought together as a collection. Um, they, like Tin Can Knits, they always have a very extensive size range, like from baby to, you know, I think the sweater and cardigan sizes go up to a six extra large. Um, and they also can be made using different yarn weights. So if DK weight is what you have in your stash or fingering weight is what you have in your stash, you can still use that to knit these patterns. I just think that's so phenomenal. So if you're just looking for those staple items or you're knitting, you know, your first whatever it is for the first time, then you could knit these. I'm looking at those socks. I want to be a sock knitter. I really do. I think it'd be great. I'm looking at it. I haven't bought it yet though, but I'm looking at it because I want to knit socks. I think I would want to try in one of my carts <laughs> that I have online right now. Um, I have like a worsted weight sock yarn in my cart and I think I would like to try knitting socks in like a heavier weight and not a fingering weight because I just think that would be less frustrating for me. It's always I find easier to learn something new with a yarn that isn't so thin like a fingering weight yarn is. Um, that's just my own personal opinion. I think if you're learning to knit, don't try to learn fingering, you know, choose like a worsted or something. It's just, it feels less clumsy. I, at least it does in my hands. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I choose to check out though, I could have a worsted weight yarn in my stash, sock yarn, and I could try to knit a pair of socks. Don't know how yet though. Haven't decided on my technique yet. I have looked into it and I, I don't know what to do. Do I buy those Addy sock Socky yarns or socky needles. <laughs> I don't even know what they're called, but they have at least I know um, I'm getting off topic again. That's okay. I, I acknowledge it. I know that Penrose Nets on her podcast, she talked before about trying the Addy needles that I think they're meant for socks. Like the one needle is a lot longer than the other one. So it's like the short, you know how you buy the short needles, the little ones, little ones? <laughs> I'm making no sense. I feel delirious at this point. I'm making no sense. You know what I mean? The little tubular needles, circular needles. I'm just getting delirious. I find those, they can be hard on my hands though to knit with if I try using them for a long time. I usually reserve them for like cuffs when I've, like stretch the shit out of my yarn. I finally need to give up and switch over to the smaller, um, smaller circulars. But if I use them for a really long time, like they are hard on my hands and I find my gauge gets a lot tighter too, even when I try to loosen up. I know that she said she found the Addy needles like easier on, I think on her hands. I'd be interested to try those because I just don't know if I would stick with Magic Loop or VPNs. They both sound very fiddly to me. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Next up, not socks. One pattern. It is the Calm Down Cardigan by Lily Kate France at Lily Kate Makes. Um, I've gushed about Lily many times before already, probably in every single episode I've knit. Or <laughs> I've knit. I've done. Um, I actually am testing, still just finishing up and almost done on my last sleeve of her movement sweater. So I'm going to be done that in the next few days. I've just you know, made it my, made it my goal to finish that up and get it on my blocking mats. Um, but I love this calm down cardigan that she just released. Again, it uses a DK weight yarn and I don't have a lot of DK weight in my stash right now. It is size inclusive. It does recommend quite a bit of positive ease. So 10 to 12 inches of positive ease is recommended. So I think there's a note on her Ravelry page where if you are between sizes, she recommended sizing down rather than up because so much ease is already recommended. It is knit seamlessly. It sounds like you start with a saddle shoulder piece and then you um, stitches are picked up in different sections to work the rest of the cardigan. The button band is done in double knitting, includes some short rows for shaping. Lily always talks about her designs on her podcast as well. So if you aren't subscribed to her, you should be. Um, she always talks in depth about like her process. And I, I love listening to her talk about how she does it because it boggles my mind. 
Um, and I know that she had some struggles, I think, making this design. Uh, so I'm glad it came to fruition. I'm glad it turned out so well. Um, I know she worked really hard on it and she really wanted this design to have more of like a luxe look, like a, and there's nothing wrong with having things look handmade. I love when people ask me if I made something that I'm wearing. I think that's, it's just a phenomenal feeling, but it's also amazing when somebody thinks that you actually bought something because it doesn't look handmade. You know, that's also you obviously got to like, you got to a certain elevation at that point when you have reached to the point where something looks like you would have bought it in a store. My personal opinion. But I think that's kind of what she was going for here. And I cannot wait until I cave and buy more decay yarn so that I can knit that pattern. It is on my list. And my next pattern that I want to talk about as well, again, it's by Lily Kate Makes, but I think this is so cool. It is the Boulevard bag. I have, I don't think I've ever knit a bag before. I don't know. I'm not sure if I've ever knit any kind of like bag before, purse before. Um, but I just thought it looks so cool. I love her version that she did. She's made a couple. I love the one she made in black and white. Um, the what the you can see from the photo that I've added, but the body itself is white The edging is all in black and the strap is done in black as well The yarn she chose is like a chunky boucle yarn. So like a loopy yarn Held with one strand of mohair for the body. I think the edging is all done in like an air and weight yarn She does recommend some kind of like fluffy textured or loopy yarn. I think for the body of the bag um, but definitely you could be combining a few different yarns you have at home. I mean, obviously for something like a bag, I don't think gauge matters quite as much, right? As for something that you're going to be wearing. Uh, it sounds like it's worked in three pieces. So the two bag halves and the strap, um, short rows and decreases are used to create the shape of the bag. Then the two halves are joined together using a three needle bind off, which is one of the seeming methods I don't actually mind too much. <laughs> Tucks are used, I've never made used tucks before, used to create channels through which reinforcements, so she actually used plastic cable ties uh, and inserted them into those black sections so the bag can keep its shape. That's crazy. That is so cool. The strap is made in double knitting and then a zipper is included. And there is a video as well included for how to assemble the bag together, which I would need. That's phenomenal, phenomenal, love it so much. I think her black and white version, I mean, black and white, it's just so classy. Again, you can work with anything. I think it is so cool. I have no boucle yarn in my stash. I have no fluffy textured boucle, any of that yarn. It's not anything I normally buy because then I'm like, what am I doing with this? I don't know. Um, but I would buy boucle yarn to make that. I think that is so cute. So cute. I just need a place to go with it too, but that's all right. That can be sorted out later. Next pattern coming up. I think actually the rest of the patterns that I talk about are gonna be a little bit of exceptions um, to everything I've talked about so far in that they're not, they're not knitting garments. Um, but this one is the Two Bridges Shawl by Tori Yu at Tori Knits NYC. I feel like Tori has been coming out with a lot of really, really cute, really stunning designs. She seems to be coming out with things all the time. Um, and this is a, like a crescent shaped shawl that she made using Madeline Tosh twist light and Madeline Tosh Tosh impression yarn. So fingering yarn and a mohair yarn. <clears throat> and the pattern uses one skein of each. So I think they each have, excuse me, about 420 yards of yarn in each skein. And I think that she designed it so that it would pretty much use up all the yarn. So if you had that approximate amount of fingering weight yarn and mohair yarn in a coordinated or uncoordinated color that you wanted to use, um, then it would work for this shawl. But it is um, alternating sections of garter stitch, lace, and short row wedges. And I would definitely have enough fingering yarn and possibly mohair yarn to make this too. I think it is so pretty and I love the neon that she chose. Again, you don't need to choose Madeline Tosh. Madeline Tosh is not super cheap, <laughs> understatement. Um, but you don't have to choose that. You can choose something that is more 
affordable or um, I almost said gettable. Something that's more gettable for you. That makes sense. The next pattern that I'm going to talk about, actually the next two, are also shawls. And I am really not much of a shawl knitter. I think I've knit, I've knit a few of Molly's at Weidel Crochet Co. I've knit a few um, like shawls for her. More in like a chunkier weight yarn though too. So they worked up really fast, which is also very satisfying. But otherwise, I have never been much of a shawl knitter or a shawl wearer. Um, but I also just love the idea of shawls not just for going out, but just for like cuddling up in when you're at home or you know that your office is cold or you know that your classroom is always cold and that you can just take with you and cuddle up in. That's what I love shawls for. And I thought this one is stunning. It is the Anna Zadora shawl by Lindsay Fowler at Lark's Per Knits. I hope I got that right. Um, this one was actually recent released in December, so not necessarily in the past couple months, but this is my list, so I thought December worked fine. Uh, and she knit it using, like, I think it was like an advent box. It was a Pandora myth-themed countdown box, some kind of advent. And somebody, so I had also, I'm going to get off topic again. Somebody had, um, on my Instagram, I put out something one night. I was trying to, you know, I was looking at the types of podcasts other people put out when I'm not necessarily just talking about what I've been working on, the different topics, things people talk about, whatever, whatever. And I wanted to find out what people would be interested in seeing for some different video ideas. And somebody said, um, you know, ideas for, you know, scrap yarn or like advents. Um, and I've never bought an advent myself because I have a control problem and I, I, I love being surprised by things, but yarn can be so expensive and I don't know how much I love being surprised by yarn. Like what if it's not, what if the color is not for me then? And what if I don't love it? It wouldn't be the designers or the designer. It wouldn't be the dyer's fault. I mean, different colors, people are attracted to different colors, obviously. But if something is not necessarily for me and I pay a lot of money for it, I struggle with that a lot, especially because I don't have a salary. Maybe when I have a salary again, I'll buy an Advent box. <laughs> See, it all comes back to that. Um, but I think this would be a phenomenal idea if you did have some kind of Advent or if you just had a lot of figure and weight scrap, like a scrap yarn. I always save my scraps. I never throw out anything. I mean, I never throw out anything anyway, but I never throw out yarn because I was think there's, I can use this for something. And I don't know what it is when I'm saving it, but I know I can use it for something. And I think, I look at this and I think, use your old scraps. I don't think it even, I'm not even sure if you need to like weave in any ends because it does have a fringe as well, but stunning. And I love the photos that she took of this. Like the, they're like this dark moody vibe. Oh, the colors look so vibrant. Obviously it's, designed for like one size, but you can adjust it based on how much yarn you want to use. I would definitely have enough finger weight yarn, but if I ever had a salary again, advent box, that's what you could use that for. Phenomenal. And the next pattern too, similar thing. You could use it, you could make it using an advent box or finger weight scrap yarn. It is the new shawl um, designed by Wool and Pine, Bluegrass. I saw this and stunning. I want to knit it today. My only problem is that it's also made, I think using like a brioche stitch and I am intimidated by brioche. I tried knitting or learning brioche all of one time. I tried, um, it was like a class and I couldn't get it. I eventually just left because I was like feeling really embarrassed that I couldn't figure out what I was doing. And everybody else would be catching on and I was like, yeah, no, this isn't for me. I need to go back to YouTube where it is safe in my own home. And I can rewatch videos 10 times. Um, yeah, I just, I, I couldn't stay because I couldn't figure it out. And so I think there is a, like some kind of brioche stitch involved in the making of this shawl. However, there is a 45 minute video tutorial included in the pattern to teach you. I, how considerate. That is made, when people put out 45 minute video tutorials, <laughs> They are catering to me. That is what I love. Um, so I would cast this on tomorrow. I think they used uh, Hedgehog Fibers sock minis, um, 
which I obviously don't own any hedgehog fibers either because I don't have a salary. However, someday I will again, and maybe I will buy hedgehog fibers, but for now, I just have a lot of other sock yarn, and you could use whatever you have in your stash. It would be so beautiful. But I love the model photos that they chose in those, like, I love color. I, I love it so much. And I know not everybody is really comfortable wearing a lot of color, but for a shawl, you don't have to wear it all the time. I think this is gorgeous, gorgeous. I wanna make it immediately. And I might, we'll see. The very last pattern is also an exception in that it is a garment, but it is not knitted. It is a crochet garment, the collab shirt by Jessica, Jessica Sung. Please, I hope I got that right. If I didn't, I apologize. I can clearly barely talk at the best of times. Um, her Instagram is at Jess underscore root knots. Um, this is a crochet tee. It's a button up. It's made using either lace or figure weight yarn. Um, it is also size inclusive. It has a made to have a lot of positive ease. There are, I haven't bought the pattern yet, but there are diagrams, pictures, and video tutorials included as well. I am not a very good crocheter. I think I tried starting to learn how to crochet either right before or at the same time that I was learning how to knit. It was kind of both happening at the same time. And crochet is just one of those things that never stuck as well in my brain. Okay, I think I have to try to show you this. My cat Molly is like, I'm gonna just like ignore my, oh no, she didn't. I was gonna try to show you, she moved. She's like half out of her bed her head's on the floor, her body's in the bed. It was not at all comfortable looking, but she moved anyway. She knew I was talking about her. Um, sorry about that. But what I was saying is that crochet never stuck in my brain as well. So whereas knitting, I feel like even just reading it, reading your knitting, it makes a lot more sense to me. When I look at crochet, I would, I mean, when I tried to crochet, I was always ending up with more stitches, less stitches. What are my stitches? What loop hole am I going into? Like that is just, I find it so much harder. And some people are like, oh, crochet is so easy. I started this morning. I've already knit this Ami thing. How? How? Anytime I try to crochet, I mess it up. The only thing I feel somewhat okay crocheting sometimes is a crochet blanket. Back and forth, back and forth. And it has to be something simple enough though that I'm not gonna end up with 10 more stitches at the end or five less stitches at the end. Like it has to be very straightforward, but that's basically the only thing I think I've ever crocheted successfully is a blanket. And I love crocheting blankets because they do work up so much like knitting a blanket, daunting. Done it a few times, but it's daunting. If I'm not working with like a, unless like I have like a super bulky yarn or something, that's fine. But otherwise knitting blankets is, you know, it's a process, it, you have to be, just living for the process at that point in time and not for the product. But crochet blankets, I mean, they use up a ton of yarn, but they do work up quite quickly. I don't know that I would ever have the skills necessary, even with videos and, you know, even if there was like phone support, <laughs> I don't know that I would ever have the skill to make this t-shirt, but I think it is super, super cute. I would love to see somebody else make it. If any of you are good crocheters, please make this top. Send me photos. Let me live vicariously through you. I think it is stunning. I have so much finger weight yarn and 0% confidence that I could actually make this, but wow, phenomenal. Please make this, then show it to me or send me it, fine, whatever. But I wanna see this made in so many versions because I think it's so cute. And that, 53 minutes later, 54 minutes, is the end of my list. So thank you for bearing with me through all that chaos. It feels like I haven't done this in a very long time, um, but it was fun getting back on and talking about yarn and knitting again. I will hopefully have another video coming up in another week or so, because I should have a few finished items that I'll want to talk about at that point. And obviously, as soon as I finish one thing, I'm immediately casting on three other things. So I will have a few more things on my needles to talk about. But otherwise, I think that's it. So take care and I will see you all next time.